if you look back at the vintage Princes of Power line from the 80s, you will see that it's very deliberately full of characters that represent all of the kind of key way girls play with open-ended imaginative play. And what I mean by that is, well, the figures have hair for hair play, but thematically they're all after what, well, girls are very attracted to. Things like fairies and peacocks and, and butterflies and, you know, I'm surprised there was no, like, you know, female pony. I mean, girls love ponies. Well, obviously, mermaid is high up there on girl fantasy tropes, and thanks to the little-known independent film that Disney put out that kind of made mermaids at least a little bit more popular back in the late 90s there, they've gone on to become a staple of toys everywhere, from both the, well, just generic mermaid toys to licensed IP that simply attach a fin and uh, tail to a, any character, and bam, mermaid money. All right, so for Masters of the Universe, we have our token mermaid, and despite the fact that Masters of the Universe Classics is more of a uh, adult line, if you will, it's not aimed at kids, even though, you know, kids can play with them, they're age-graded 4+, but they're graded, you know, adult collector, so, you know, there's a little bit more thematically adult things going on. Well, okay, maybe not as much as adult things going on in that Netflix show that completely rewrote all of She-Ra and her supporting cast, but that's not important right now. We're talking about the original Mermista. Why they changed them all so much for the damn show? I mean, come on. Just make up new characters instead of rewriting old ones. All right, well, yes. An old one she is. I mean, she's a character that was in the original Filmation show and was one of kind of She-Ra's main cast of characters, especially because she represented that water element. And fans for years, like most popular Masters of the Universe and P.O.P. characters, were kind of imagining what the figure would look like when released in classics. Would it have alternate hair, alternate legs, alternate belts? Well, the legs were a definite, because Mermista had two distinct forms. Like, well, most mermaids, from Daryl Hannah to Ariel, you had your fish form and your leg form. And doing this for classics was something we really wanted to do, but it did mean kind of finding ways to... I guess cut quarters other ways, because adding an exact second pair of legs, well not an exact, but adding a second set, was not cheap. The same went with doing a water blast effect. I love doing blast effects, but boy did I get pushback from this from some of the designers, and as much as it would have been cool to have a water blast effect, you were just going to get Mermista proper, because it was kind of more important to give legs and fish lower halves than a blasting water. We did include a stand, though, so that in her fish form she could stand up right on your shelf, which, honestly, I was really proud we did that, because, you know, the play value of these toys and how they interact with each other and how collectors choose to display them is pretty much the main play pattern here. So, yeah, getting her to display upside down, right side up, but not backwards through time was important, and like I said, having two complete lower halves, fish and human, I guess, shall we say, as well as that extra stand for the fish form, you can see it clipped there below, made it so you weren't going to get things like giant rotating discs or blast effects that other characters like Castaspella were able to enjoy simply because of the cost. But we did want to make sure we went the extra mile and that the fish form was fully articulated, featuring ball joints and uh, T-turn joints at the bottom. So she wasn't just going to be a you know mermaid that sat and flopped around, you could actually display her in kind of battle-ready stances. Again, knowing that display and acquisition are the main play patterns for Masters of the Universe Classics, not doinky-doink play. Again, even though that kids could do that. So, we were building our Princess of Power, and this whole, uh, you know, 30th anniversary line and this subset is really what did it. I think that if we hadn't been able to sell in this subset, we might have had to go without a few of these. But, getting to Mermista, very important, and there's not too many sea characters other than Merman, so, uh, you know, that's probably also why she uh, went into battle with him. Of course, you could make her into a more famous mermaid if you wanted to do head swap with some of the other Princess of Power girls. I mean, that was always deliberate. And again, that famous infamous bio where she uh, beheads Merman with his own trident. People say, whoa, whoa, where's that violence coming from? Well, the 2000X show was killing characters off left and right. Look at Web Store. And this was specifically written in because we knew we had to off Merman. Why would you have to off Merman? Well, because there is a Mermaid Merman 2, Mermaid Merman 2, referred to in the He-Man's Son of Hero concept. And so we had to make room for him. 
Beast Man was just the same old Beast Man, but other characters for the Son of He-Man era received kind of new versions like Manny Faces 2 and Merman 2, if you will. So we knew that we had to uh, replace Mermaid and having Mermista send him off on his uh, final voyage seemed like a appropriate use of fish on fish action. Am I allowed to say that? Boy, someone might report me to YouTube. So, there we go, Mermista, 30th anniversary figure, into the line, into your collection, and hey, maybe even into your swim cool bathtub, because that toy is made to float.